So this is 10.4, and 10.4 is talking about a whole new coordinate system called the polar coordinate system. Normally, we've always been dealing with things in the rectangular coordinate system, and now we're going to be talking about the polar coordinate system. Okay. So in the polar coordinate system, the center here is still called, it, what used to be called the origin is now called the pole. Okay. And if you create a ray from the pole out, those are called polar axes. So if you notice, this is a polar axis at 0 or 2 pi. This is a polar axis at pi over 6. This is a polar axis at pi over 4. This is a polar axis at pi over 3. This is a polar axis at pi over 2, so on and so forth. Okay, So they're all one directional rays. You could even go from here this way, and that is a, uh, a polar axis at pi. Now each point in the plane is assigned to polar coordinates. Much like in rectangular coordinates, you have x and y. Well, here we have r and theta. r being the radius, theta being an angle. Okay, r is the directed distance from the pole, the origin, um, and the point. So if your radius is positive, you move out to the right in the positive direction. And if your radius is negative, you move backward toward the negative direction. And then your theta, if it's positive, you move counterclockwise. But if it's negative, you move clockwise. Okay, so it all depends on the angle. Um, so lots of times there's multiple representations for the same point. Okay. Um, so I just want you to notice that if I were to take the 2 comma pi over 3, that means I would go out 2 to the right and then go around this eccentric circle to the pi thirds angle okay so that this angle here is um, pi over 3 angle and where I landed is this, the point this is the point P to uh, pi over 3 I can get to that same spot using a negative radius if I go out to the left 2 and then I go 1 pi over 3 2 pi over 3 3 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3 I can still get to that same place, okay? And so I just want you to know that these two are equivalent to each other. Now notice, because I went out this way to begin with, this is just a pi radian more than if I would have gone out to the right, which is why that other angle can be obtained by taking the smaller angle plus pi to get the new one. You could also do this using negative, um, uh, sorry, negative, um, angles as well. If I were to go um, uh, da, 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 da. actually no you can't do that. If I were to do the negative angles it would have to be um, like negative 2 and negative pi over 3. That's what I'm thinking. So if I go out negative 2 Negative pi over 3 means I do not move in this direction, I move in this direction. So I would have to go um, from here a pi thirds, but see that lands me here. So I would have to go 2 pi thirds, 2 pi thirds, 3 pi thirds. It just doesn't make any sense to do it that way. So usually we just use the two, um, we use the positive angles and then we use the two measurements for the R, okay? Um, so notice here that none of my angles are written as negative values, okay? So it says plot the points in polar form. So I'm gonna go out three units to the right, one, two, three, and then I'm gonna go counterclockwise the angle pi over two. So I end up here. We'll call this one point A, point B, point C, and point D. So this is A. Then for B, we're going to go out 2, and then we're going to go 5 pi over 4. So 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4. So I end up with a point here. For C, I'm going to go negative 1, which means in this direction, and then 2.38. Now that's in radians, so let me see, 2.38 divided by pi. Oops, I think I had something else in there. Clear, 2.38 divided by pi. It's about 3 fourths of a pi. So if I keep going in this direction, I'm gonna go, um, uh, 
one fourth, two fourths, three fourths of a pi. So I end up with a point about there. Then for D, it's four and four. So let's see, four divided by pi is about 1.2 pi. So if I go out four, one, two, three, four, and I go one whole pi unit, and then about a little bit more than a fourth of a pi. So maybe just a little bit more than a fourth more. So this would be the point D, okay? So you have to imagine, remember, you're having to imagine the circles here, right? For twos, I can't draw correctly, but you get the idea. And then for, oh, that was, should have gone through there. There we go. Okay. And then for, so normally the graph paper will already have the eccentric circles, but if not, you have to imagine them there. So C really should have been right there on that eccentric circle. And that would have been C. Okay. So let's go ahead and continue. It says the Cartesian conversion theorem. So the polar coordinates R theta of a point are related to the rectangular coordinates x, y of the point as follows. So x is equal to R cosine theta when you're going from polar to rectangular and y is equal to r sine theta. Now, if you have the rectangular coordinates and you want polar coordinates, then you can find theta by doing tan inverse of y over x, and you can find r by pretty much by doing the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so in example two, it says find the corresponding coordinates for the points given. So, in this particular case, um, we want to take all of these polar coordinates and convert them into um, rectangular. So we want to go from polar to rectangular, which means we need to do, this is r and theta, r and theta, r and theta. So for A, let's see, we're going to have X equal to 3 cosine of pi over 2. Y is going to equal 3 sine of pi over 2. The X value at pi over 2 is 0, and the Y value at pi over 2 is 1 times 3, which is 3. So this will be the same as point zero three. And if you look at it, the point zero three is going to be up here. And so if I go out three units and then go over pi over two, I end up the same spot, whether I'm talking about rectangular units or polar units. Um, for part B, we're gonna have x equals three cosine of five pi over four, y equals three sine of five pi over four. Now I'm not sure. Well, I could use this here. So, 5 pi over 4 is here. The cosine is negative square root of 2 over 2, so is the sine. So then this becomes um, the point 3 square root of 2 over 2, negative actually. And negative 3 square root of 2 over 2. Now, if I put that in a calculator just to see what the number is, it's negative 2.2, or almost negative 2.1. So if I'm looking on a graph here, you've got negative 2 point something, negative 2 point something. It's about right here somewhere. Now, if I'm talking about in polar coordinates, that means I would have to go out three units and then go... Um, 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, and 5 pi over 4. So it is indeed the same point. Now here, um, negative 1, 2.38. So we have x equals negative 1 
cosine of 2.38 and y equal to negative 1 sine of 2.38. So negative cosine 2.38, we get um, point, about 0.72. And then negative sine of 2.38, we get about um, negative 0.69. So if we're drawing that on a number line, it's like a little less than 1, and then a little less than, a little more than half of negative 1, further negative 1. So it's about here. And if you look at that point, that's actually the same point that we had over here. It is in that same location okay so they are equivalent now example 3 says find two sets of polar coordinates for the point um, but theta between 0 and 2 pi round to three decimal places so here this is X and this is Y so if I want to know theta I'm going to take 10 inverse of Y over X which means 5 square root of 2 over 5 square root of 2, which means I'm taking 10 inverse of 1. So 10 inverse, oops, 10 inverse of 1 is um, pi over 4. Okay, now r is equal to x squared plus y squared and the square root of that. So r equals the square root of 25 times 2 which is 50 plus 50. So r equals the square root of 100 which is 10. So we get one point r which is 10 and then pi over 4. Now we know the method to getting the next point. The radius will be negative, and then that means this will have to swing around another pi unit. So if I add pi to this, I get three pi over four. So those are gonna be my two points for that one coordinate. Now same thing here, if I wanna find theta, I'm gonna take 10 inverse of y over x, so three over negative four. So 10 inverse of 3 over negative 4 and if it's not divisible by pi exactly we're just going to say it is um, negative 0.6435 radians. Um, remember we can't have theta as a negative so I'm going to have to add 2 pi to this so that I can get its equivalent angle. So add 2 pi and I get um, 6.08. I get 78. But um, we're just going to round that, round this up to 0 0.8. And then my r is going to be the square root of negative 4 squared plus 3 squared. So the square root is 16 plus 9, which is the square root of 5, which is 5. So I have one point at 5 comma 6.08, and I have the other one at negative 5, and if I add a pi to this, um, plus pi, I get 9.22, and that's going to be the value there. Okay. Actually, this is more than 2 pi, and my angle is only supposed to be 2 pi. So what I'm going to do is instead of adding 2 pi to the negative value, this is within 2 pi, right? Because 2 pi is 6.28. So that's between 0 and 2 pi. But 9 point something is not between 0 and 2 pi. 2 pi is 6.28. That goes over. Which means instead of adding 2 pi to get this, I should just take my original, let me go back up here when I did the 10 inverse, there we go. I should take that and just add a pi to it. And so I get 2.50 if I round it, okay? 
And there we go. Now that is between 0 and 2 pi. We couldn't add a pi because it made it too big. So we um, basically took away a pi here because we weren't able to add it. Now here we go 10 inverse. 10 inverse of um, y over x. So where is the 10 inverse undefined, right? Well, that happens when theta is pi over 2. And why does that happen when theta is pi over 2? Because the cosine equals 0. The denominator of tangent is cosine, and it equals 0 here. So it's at pi over 2. Now, r is going to equal the square root of 0 squared plus negative 9 squared, which is just 9. So we have 9 and pi over 2. And if I add a pi, as long as I'm still within 2 pi, this should be negative 9 now. I am still less than 2 pi, then I'm good. If this was bigger than 2 pi, then I would have to subtract the pi instead. We learned that from our second example.